Good evening. Good, good evening and welcome to the CASA update for the week of 7-11-2016. How are you this evening? Good. Good. I'm still in Canada. Ah. Well, uh, <laughs> blame Canada? No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, only, uh, it's only funny if you're a South Park fan, I guess. Um, so I see we've released a couple calls to action. Um, yes, um, we put out, sorry, I was in the middle of doing something and my computer's now weird. So, um, sorry. no, it's okay. It was my fault for getting onto something before coming on the air. Um, <clears throat> so on, uh, Saturday, actually we got word about this on Friday, but I didn't get to it until late on Friday. So we put it out Saturday morning. Um, there is a call to action for Allegheny County in, uh, that's, that's Western Pennsylvania. Um, that's Vic Pittsburgh is actually in Allegheny County. Yeah. Um, there is the, uh, Allegheny County Department of Health, I believe, and the Board of Health are sort of getting together and, um, they're going to be considering an indoor use ban, um, that would subject vaping to the same uh, prohibition on smoking. Um, so this is for July 13th. And um, we got all this information from Bill Godshaw, uh, okay. by the way, smoke-free Pennsylvania. Um, so, uh, and this is, uh, I forget when the meeting occurred, but uh, there was kind of a, a news article about this, I guess a couple of months ago, maybe, maybe back in April. Um, the, uh, uh, one of them, the board of health or the department of health brought this ordinance to the other and said, Hey, let's, let's do this and, and check it out and see if it's legal and all that. So, um, they are moving on that. And, uh, the meeting is this Wednesday, July 13th at 1230 the Allegheny, De Allegheny County Health Department Conference Room in Pittsburgh. All the address information is on our site. And uh, we also have, uh, went ahead and did kind of a, one of those pre-written email campaigns that we do okay. normally for state stuff okay. um, because we have a few emails for people from uh, the Board of Health and uh, the Allegheny County Health Department. That's a mouthful okay. for some reason. Uh, <laughs> So you can participate in that call to action as well as uh, refer to the talking points. These are our kind of standard talking points that we provide for people dealing with indoor use bans um, and uh, use these to kind of develop your three minute, only three minutes. You have three minutes. That's it. Three minutes to speak. Um, and uh, if you do sign up to speak, please reach out to Bill Godshall and let him know that you're coming. Um, I'm sure that he would like to arrange for people to meet in a certain area and possibly go over some, um, some helpful pointers for, right. uh, presenting. Sure. Um, so, and, and I, I don't think we can actually say this enough. Uh, please dress appropriately if you do plan to attend, yes. uh, nice shirts. Um, even if you have a clean pair of jeans, that tends to look better, um, when you are wearing a button down shirt that is tucked in and all that fancy stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. It's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the 13th. That's in two days. Yes. Definitely. Um, Go ahead. And also, uh, while we're on the topic of Pennsylvania, um, sure. as far as I know, the state has not finalized the uh, uh, the, f the funding side of the state budget. Uh, they got the appropriations done, but they haven't done the how we're going to pay for it part. Um, so that is still an issue. Uh, so while you're looking, as if, if you're a resident of Pennsylvania, while you're looking at this Allegheny County thing, definitely scroll down and look at the 40% wholesale tax uh, call to action because that is still active. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so has anything new and exciting been going on <laughs> besides 
I see all these shops in Utah being um, told they're not allowed to sell unless it's face to face. Um, I, you know, I, <laughs> I haven't really looked into this too much other than, you know, to see that the Utah Smoke Free Association posted on their blog pretty clearly that online sales in Utah are now Banned. against against the law. Yeah. Um, and that's even, you know, sometimes this will allow, I, I think in other states there have been exemptions where like, you know, a, a, an in-state retailer can ship to someone else in the state. Sure. Um, but none of that exists uh, in Utah. So. Wow. <laughs> just straight up online sales in Utah are against the law. Um, and, and that's, that's just the way it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, Utah and Indiana both last week, you know, sort of experiencing a shutdown in, yeah. uh, you know, how business can be done. You know, I, I found it really ironic that, uh, NATO, the, the, uh, convenience store people said that, oh no, no, they were backtracking on this. The same time I was seeing all of these shops boarded up and shuttered up and photos of them all over the place them going these guys really need to get their facts straight this is uh uh you're talking about indiana yeah i'm talking about indiana yeah yeah it's uh yeah in indiana it continues to be somewhat confusing uh even for the people who are you know relatively and highly competent that have been following this thing from the beginning Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I know I, I saw a post earlier, I haven't followed up with it, uh, mm -hmm. but it looks like Evan McMahon from, uh, Hoosier Vapors was attending something at a federal courthouse today. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that was in relation to the Good Cat LLC lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Uh, so there should be some news coming out of Indiana shortly regarding that. Um, but yeah, you know, this whole thing was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess the Grocers Association or somebody had kind of talked to the ATC, which I believe is like the Alcohol and Tobacco Commission, right. um, about this, you know, language in the um, in the law. Right. That was it, it, people were interpreting this to be a uh, kind of a 60, 60 day sell through period. Right. And there's not, and, and it's not, it's just, it's not there or it's, it might be in the code, but the, the ATC has the option to kind of enforce things by the law, by the something. I, I really don't understand it, but you know, right. July one, as far as I understand, um, they were starting to enforce things. Um, and there's, you know, there's some other sort of inter, um, business, you know, nonsense going on. People are yeah. sort of calling on their competitors and ratting them out. Um, which, it, it, I mean, it, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, the law sort of encourages that to some extent. Um, because if you're selling liquid that's not manufactured by one of the six approved manufacturers, mm -hmm. um, those manufacturers that have their license can actually come after you and the people that manufacture the e-liquid. I, I might might be wrong on, on one of those parts, but um, they, they can sue for damages, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty nuts. So um, anyway, I, at some point last week, we were expecting some good news out of Indiana. Um, I, I don't exactly know if we got it. Um, I have to look through my notes here. Um, I, I think that there's some interesting stuff that'll be happening on appeal. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, so it's not over in Indiana. Um, you know, first of all, the lawsuit is still kind of happening. Lawsuits actually is still kind of <laughs> happening. Yeah. And, um, you know, if anybody, I, I was actually on Kevin Skipper's, uh, show, um, on uh, Friday, mm -hmm. uh, the, the VCC live uh, right. update that he does in the afternoon. And uh, we were talking about Indiana and I, and I, I, I just have to say this, you know, if, if we're going to talk about 
you know, sure. next next steps. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the damage in Indiana has already been done or has been set in motion. Um, there are a lot of small independent shop owners out there that, you know, I mean, even people who are planning to be compliant, you know, there are delays in shipments because, you know, you're taking this massive industry and, and squeezing it down to six manufacturers. Yeah. Um, and, and it doesn't, you know, it, I, I don't think anybody has really had enough time to make adjustments for this transition. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, I want to stop short of giving excuses, but, um, you know, the, the, the practical reality of this is that people are going to have to, people are shutting down their businesses, I think. It, it's not as widespread as we might believe. A lot of the photos that we saw uh, that came out early last week were, you know, people had just have to clean out their shelves. Right. Um, some people are getting product in that they can sell, um, but for the most part, people had to clean off their shelves to make sure that they were not displaying non-compliant product. Right. <clears throat> um, you know, but they can still, there were, there were other things that they could still sell. So it wasn't like they were completely boarded up. However, even if you've got assurances from your manufacturers that like in 30 days or 45 days or 90 days or 60 days, whatever it is, that you're going to start getting shipments from them, that's a long time to wait. I mean, oh, yeah. your rent, doesn't stop needing to be paid your employees don't stop needing paychecks it, yeah. there's you know the electric bill still needs to get paid you yeah. have to eat so you know it's a it's a pretty sticky situation for a lot of people and i have nothing but sympathy for them and I, you know not that that solves the problem but yeah. uh, so you know even though that you know sitting in a different state Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm, right now I'm literally in a different country, but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, sitting in a completely different part of the country, part of the world, and looking at this situation, I can sit here and comfortably say, oh, yeah, when 2017 comes around, we're going to be, you know, it sounds like lawmakers are, there's, you know, they're going to have these pictures sitting on their desks, and they're going to have, they're going to be compelled to revisit the, the law. <laughs> um, but, you know, by then... Lots of people are going to be out of business and will have already suffered the consequences of their yeah. uh, lack of vision. So, I've already seen a couple of people that I know used to work in Indiana and vape shops talking about being unemployed. You know, yeah. that's sad. That's really, that's just terrible. And the thing I think that kills me is I'm reading these articles and these lawmakers are going, well, that wasn't what we intended. Yes, but it's what happened and you were told that was going to happen and you waved it off and you ignored it. Yeah, this this what this shouldn't it? shouldn't be a surprise. You know, any lawmaker at this point in Indiana that says, "Oh, I'm surprised that this is what is happening." Um they're saying that because they have to, because they have to pretend that they didn't know what was going on. They were told. They yeah. were told re repeatedly by yes. By, by folks who have a lot of experience, not just in this industry, but uh, generally when dealing with, with, with issues like these. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's there's, there's really just no excuse. I agree. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, there's so much more you could say, but <clears throat> it, it doesn't really undo the damage. Yeah. Um, so is that it for this week, Alex, do you think? Um, probably I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about, uh, I, I, uh, I might be traveling next week, but it, it, my, my, my schedule is about to get really hectic. So, uh, <laughs> that's kind of at least something else to, to mention that, uh, there are still events going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that I've heard from some other, from people that, you know, events that we're attending, right. Um, they're actually having a lot of uh, businesses back out oh, wow. of uh, the, the trade shows I, for whatever reason. I mean, you know, I understand that, that some people feel that their money is better spent in other places, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but, uh, you know, for others, I, I think that, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just a, yeah, it's not my place really to comment. I just thought it's worth mentioning that you know we're you know the deeming regulations aren't even effective yet and we're already starting to feel and see the impact 
Um, we're, we're a little less than a month away from the effective date and uh, people are starting to freak out a bit and, and trying to, you know, they're either planning their exit strategy or they're, you know, conserving their money and, and, and shifting gears a little bit. Um, so, I, you know, I don't really, I don't know, you know, a dollar for dollar kind of, you know, what the value is of, of some of these companies going to trade shows practically every weekend or even once a month. Um, you know, I just, I don't have those numbers. I, I've never attended a trade show as a business owner, so I don't know what your value is there. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's bad enough that, you know, people are backing out of agreements now. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, all that just, uh, you know, that's just, that's life. Um, yeah. But uh, so coming up, uh, we will be in, uh, I believe, VCC in Pittsburgh is our next appearance. Mm -hmm. um, and then let me just open up my calendar here. <clears throat> so VCC Pittsburgh, that is July 23rd and 24th at the David Lawrence uh, Convention Center in beautiful downtown Pittsburgh. It is actually quite nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the last weekend in July, the 29th or the 30th, I'm going to be in Tacoma, Washington, uh, attending a couple of um, kind of advocacy night get together things at some, some local shops there. Um, I believe, uh, actually, I probably shouldn't mention. I don't, oh, wait, it's in our newsletter, so it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> It's 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 at Obsidian Vape in, Vapor in in Tacoma, Washington. Is at least one of one of them I know of. Uh, I think that's the kind of open to consumers thing. Um, and uh, I'm actually really looking forward to meeting people in Washington State. We haven't had a whole lot of contact with them traditionally. Um, and for those that don't know, if you're new to the podcast or new to CASA in general, um, Washington State is one of those places where uh, people got together. It seems early and got organized and so uh, the need for national organizations to come in and, and either you know we've we've played kind of an assisting role uh, if, if needed uh, but for the most part um, Wavape and uh, the Pink Lung Brigade have been doing um, a pretty stellar job and they managed to get a pretty decent piece of legislation passed this year um, that uh, the only thing that I had an issue with was uh, some labeling requirement, but uh, there's a provision in there that sunsets that once the federal law kicks in. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I think I missed that in my initial assessment. It doesn't matter though because they, they did the work, they got it passed, and um, congratulations. So, um, yeah, looking forward to meeting those people and, and, uh, building some relationships there. Uh, and then in August, the first weekend, I will be in Deadwood, South Dakota. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Greg Conley will also be out there. Um, uh -huh. part of the reason for our visit is because number one, we were invited and they're helping bring us out. Uh, number two, um, we have not had a whole lot going on in South Dakota, North Dakota. Um, and uh, we really need to get out there and meet some people. So if you're in that area, um, which is generally a large and spread out area, um, please come down and say hi. And, and I mean, if you're listening to this podcast and you live in South Dakota or North Dakota, just go ahead and join CASA because there's a chance that we're going to be sending something out um, to give you information about a, I believe, potential ballot initiative in North Dakota uh, that would enact a tax on vapor products. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I have never actually spent time in South Dakota. Um, apparently, this is like in the middle of bike week or oh. whatever. And is it, is it Sturgis, South Dakota? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I'm not I've a. Mo I'm not a motorcycle guy, so I don't know. Um, um, but, I'm married uh, to one, but we've never <laughs> been to. We've never been to the Dakotas, so. <laughs> so yeah, apparently that's happening. It it should be pretty interesting, um, and then also that weekend, uh, Saturday the sixth, mm -hmm. uh, a billion lives is premiering in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes. Um, which is uh, and I you know. I'm going to be in South Dakota, but 
this awesome movie is going to be playing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So yeah. um, I believe, uh, I know Kristen, Kristen Noll Marsh is from Wisconsin. So I mm-hmm. believe she is going to be attending. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Julie is working it so she can be there. I can't remember. Um, but we're trying to get some Kassab people there. Um, and certainly there will be some other opportunities for this to for us to be at the premiere of this movie in the United States. And we are all we are all very excited about this and looking forward right. to it. So exactly. Yeah. So I guess that's it. Thank you. That that is pretty much it. Um, okay. I uh, I do feel like I'm leaving something. I always feel like I'm leaving something out, and I apologize. Well, yeah, you know, the problem is neither of us are psychic, so we don't know what's going to pop up between now and when we say goodbye. Yeah. Because um, things seem to happen that quickly. But thank you for coming on, and, and thank you for everything you do for us. And um, enjoy your time in Canada with your lovely wife. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great evening. You too.